Uh, Your Excellency, uh, Madam Ambassador, uh, welcome again to this facility. Um, I'm, I'm also thrilled this morning the, to see very confident a young girl who has lived with uh, HIV for some time. And she's confident enough to explain to us without fear uh, congratulations. And uh, Madam Ambassador, you have seen what we have uh, been able to achieve with the help of uh, American, American government. Um, so far, I'm so happy. And you have not been referring what America has been doing. <laughs> no, I've, I've been saying there is nothing much America has done in this. But today, I'm realizing that much of the help that they have done into our own facilities to our people is massive. Uh, congratulations. We are looking forward to see Eve again. There is more effort to be put into helping uh, our people. As a big brother, uh, of course, when you see your younger brothers in the situation we are in, we expect uh, to have an end of help as it has happened. Number two, this facility, you know, is the oldest. It's a one, 108 years, as, as, as just they've, they've indicated. Uh, we are looking for a way to see, to modernize it few of the parts we have seen is what we have done currently, and we are certain that in the near future we'll be able to realize. The mother child, we're going to see it in another couple of minutes, is a dream of everyone in this county that it's operationalized. Uh, you had even, I didn't know that lady the other side where we saw the children, you know, they are passionate that we can be able to move there. Hopefully that we'll talk about it. The doctors, congratulations, the staff here, I'm happy for the good work, uh, you know, you have shown. This is how we are operating it. It's not because we are coming in. This is what exactly happens. This gentleman has done a good job. He's the one actually who moved collections from 47 million to 200 million. Uh, which, is, um, you know, great work with this, the team that is around. Allow me to ask the visitor to say hi to us and to give us goodies. <laughs> <laughs> Madam Ambassador. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Yeah. Good morning. morning. Jumbo. I want to first say thank you to the governor for welcoming me to Kisi County yesterday and today. And I want to say thank you to all of the healthcare workers here. You are the most important people in this whole system. Without you, no amount of money, no amount of drugs, no amount of anything will matter. And so I just want to say thank you to all the nurses, the doctors, the staff who work every day so hard to take care of so many patients. I understand there's 12,500, no, 120, 1,200 patients every day. It has to be one of the busiest hospitals. But a round of applause for all the healthcare workers and everything that you do. As many of you know, um, the United States and Kenya have had a 60-year partnership. We've been working together for 60 years, and that relationship is based on trust, it's based on deliverables, it's based on working together to make sure that we're doing everything we can to support you. And um, it was very nice of you to say sort of the big brother, younger brother. I like to think of big sister, but... <laughs> <laughs> but uh, anyway, we're very proud of our relationship uh, with the Kenyan government. Um, we saw today um, a remarkable mother-child um, uh, unit and how the staff is really helping the young mothers, the single mothers, um, to bring babies into the world healthy, happy, and um, teaching them how to take care of the babies. I know I have two boys who are now 40 and uh, 37, but I remember how scary it was as a new mom. You know, you look at this child and you say, now what am I supposed to do? And uh, so I really appreciate what we saw this morning. And then um, we obviously saw the um, HIV clinic, which um, is really a product of PEPFAR, um, which is uh, President Bush's initiative to um, combat HIV and AIDS. And this facility is supported by the CDC, the Center for Disease Control. And um, it's remarkable what we have done together. And I wanted to um, acknowledge the young people who are here for the 00Z um, program that has started here in Kenya that has spread nationwide. So that's a tribute to Kenyan innovation. And obviously want to um, acknowledge again uh, the young woman who spoke to us with such great confidence. And she asked me, 
what could I learn from you about being successful? And I said, you don't need any advice from me. You are well on your way to achieving great things. So um, thank you to all of those people. One of the things we learned about PEPFAR and HIV is the systems and the delivery network turned out to be as effective for COVID and tuberculosis and malaria as it has for HIV. So we've learned a lot about working with Kenya to not only combat um, HIV, but also combat the other diseases that are um, you know, really quite prevalent everywhere and, and in some countries gaining in prevalence. So we want to keep up that excellent work. and. Um, I think the last thing I would say is um, we can achieve the goal of um, ending mother-to-child transmission of HIV by 2027, and I think we can actually re re you know, get HIV beyond an epidemic. So with all of your help, um, with your expertise and your dedication, I just want to say thank you. Thank you for what you do with us. Thank you for helping us be better, and we want to listen to you and understand um, how we can continue to improve. So thank you very much. Thank you. Um, Madam Ambassador, I'm told uh, that uh, there is a reduction in the, um, which team is this? The number of health workers uh, that um, the Americans support. And our request is that uh, can we sustain it a bit because we are not there yet. Yeah. If we were to be able to get it okay, right, at that right time, we can, uh, we can, we can see how we can uh, slowly yeah. adapt. But for my Good health workers, you, I'm sure, what you have been crying for for some time, uh, last month I did indicate and I directed that all those people have been stagnated for so long in a southern cadre to be promoted, and I believe that work is go ongoing. The letters will be out from today. Yes, sir. The letters today? Yes, from today. Yes, sir. Okay, you will receive your letters today. Continue with the good work. This service for humanity is what we are looking forward to, really, to serve our people. And I'm happy. Congratulations for keeping this hospital clean as it is, safe as it is. We'll be there. I promise I'll support all programs of this facility and other facilities. We have 21 facilities, level 4s, and 161 health facilities that I'm certain that in the future, by the time I'm finishing my time in 10 years, uh, <laughs> uh, for sure we'll get to somewhere with your support. Otherwise, thank you and God bless you. Right. Yeah? A question? Who has a question? Yeah. Uh, would, would I ask Ambassador to say something about it? Yes. Your Excellency. Wow. <laughs> what is it? So, which drugs? Which drugs are you talking about? Essential drugs. Essential, Essential drugs. drugs. Essential uh, drugs. Okay. Uh, I think I know the answer to that. So um, let's see if I can answer your question correctly. So there is a shortage of drugs um, in many parts of Kenya. Up until recently, all the retrovirals for HIV treatment were in very short supply. And um, that is worldwide, actually, as well as Kenya. It is a function, I think, of the COVID supply chain disruption that we're still living with. But my understanding, this has gotten a lot better in the last six months. I think we're all up to date on, on retrovirals, like everyone has the retrovirals they need. And some other essential drugs are coming along. I think by the end of this year, that will be solved. It's not a money issue. It's a supply chain issue. And uh, a lot of those supply chains got disrupted during COVID. And it's been amazing to me how long it has taken for production to ramp up and then find their way to where you are. And we rely on the distribution um, mechanisms of the Kenyan government, KEMSA, as well as a couple of others. So um, making sure that those function really well um, with good governance is going to be an important thing as well. Thank you. Your, Your Excellency, there is something that uh, Edita ask. Through the U.S. Mm -hmm. uh, government, is it possible for you to have it 
like MTRH, that is the Loret and teaching at Faro mm. Hospital, that you can be able to come in, help us to establish the revolving uh, drug uh, fund. That's actually the question. Mm. Uh, you know the answer to that? I can say uh, USAID. You want to so go up there? Sure. Come, come, come. There. You should introduce yourself. <laughs> so I'm Jennifer Galbraith. I'm the program director for the HIV and TB program at CDC, Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, the as... Ambassador Whitman has said, commodities and supply chain is something that's so critical to us and that we're looking at every day how to improve it and how to further involve it. So I think, you know, this is something that we'd be interested in. USAID uh, does most of that work, but we do it collaboratively as U.S. government. We're one USG. Um, so certainly we'd like to hear more about it. This is something that we are working on every day. And when there are stockouts and shortages, what I always encourage our, the counties that are supported by CDC to do or anywhere is let us know make sure we know because sometimes it goes on without us knowing and there are things that we can do working closely with NASCOP, working closely with Ministry of Health, working closely with USAID and our implementing partners who do commodities and supply chain to see what we can do to make sure the essential medications get to the front lines where they need to be. So yes, we are always willing to be partners with you in improving the supply chain and commodities and making sure these things happen. Um, with digitiz digitization, we're trying to increasingly get into invisibility, so we don't have to ask you to report. We'll know exactly from the time the drugs are procured to the time they get to the clients that we know where they are, but that's something we're working on with the digital highway, as you're probably aware. Thank we'll you. We'll look at what they're doing in Eldorot on this revolving fund. I'm not yep. familiar with it, so we'll we, go look. Even though I've been to Moy, I didn't hear about it there, so I'll make sure I look at it. Because they had it, therefore they didn't want to say about it. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm happy. Will, Thank we you. Will, we'll look bring at this it. back and make sure we look at it. You must get a hold of uh, uh, then you uh, in a process, and um, yes, yeah, and that could be the last one if you don't mind. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. We are informed that your husband, Dr. Hash, is a renowned surgeon. Through a mothership program, could you get our young doctors and help them? What I did ask you yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> so I should have brought him with me. <laughs> yes, yeah, so my husband is a neurosurgeon, a brain surgeon and um, actually quite well known across the globe. And uh, he has um, an appointment at Jomo Kenyatta University, an appointment at the University of Nairobi, and he has also been at Tetenwek in Bomet. And the governor asked me whether he would be willing to come up here, and I think he would be. So when I get back tonight, I will um, put him on a, on a plane up here. So um, he really, you know, he is, he's obviously a well-trained doctor, but he really knows neurosurgery best. So he wouldn't really know much about moms and babies. <laughs> he wouldn't know much about uh, general medicine, but is a good coach and mentor and was chairman of the Department of Neurosurgery at UC Davis. So thank you. Um, uh, thank you, Ambassador. I, I did, actually the question you're asking, I just asked her yesterday, and <laughs> she did promise. You know, the mothers, they're the powerhouse. Uh, looking forward to to see the husband here, help our doctors interact, and see how we can be able to. Only one thing I want to just mention. I've seen our own senator castigating this hospital for no good reason. I want to say this. Guys, keep on. I've stopped the theft which was in this hospital. I'm not going to allow it. If they think they can supply air here, it cannot happen. Better they arrange to do other things. For this hospital, we have gone cashless. There is service offered for doctors continue to do good work. For them, let them make noise. Let them make noise in those TVs. But we're not going to allow them to infiltrate into our health system. We're not going to accept. This remains a service to human. And it has to be that. Therefore, for anybody who thinks that can make noise for us to give them tenders here, there is no tender. It will be competitively outside there. Therefore, I want just to direct that anybody who thinks that I'll give away, there is a day that I will blink my eye. I won't. Better they concentrate in their duties. For the hospital, let them leave us alone. We must provide service. Doctors, nurses, clinicians continue with good work. I will support you. Msife Moyo. Watch our PGA Kilele, Watalala, Sister and Elena Kaiser, Santeni Mungo Abariki.